Birmingham's notorious reputation drew the attention of Martin Luther King Jr., the president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. But it was the strength of the black community that brought King to the city in 1963, where he joined a local movement that had been fighting Jim Crow for years. On April 3rd, 1963, King and the SCLC launched a direct action campaign in the city. Dozens of activists sat in at lunch counters, white churches, and the main branch of the public library. They also marched on the county courthouse. The campaign took a dramatic turn four days later, on Sunday, April 7th, when Bull Connor unleashed police dogs on protesters. But Connor's effort to quash the demonstrations had the opposite effect. The brutal assault infuriated black onlookers who hurled rocks at the police in disgust. And it prodded even more black residents to join the movement. It also brought national media coverage and especially significant development. Until that point, news outlets had largely ignored what was happening in Birmingham. But the events of April 7th caught their eye. Sit-ins were old news. But police dogs attacking nonviolent demonstrators in front of cameras? That was unheard of. To keep from losing total control of the streets, Birmingham officials obtained a court order prohibiting further demonstrations. The injunction put movement leaders in a bind. They did not want to alienate judges by defying their orders. They needed judges, especially federal ones, to issue rulings in support of desegregation. Protest leaders vigorously debated disobeying the injunction, but King had the final word. After prayerful introspection, he decided that they had a moral obligation to disregard what he called an unjust, undemocratic, and unconstitutional use of the legal process. A few days later, on Good Friday, King and his closest aides marched from historic 16th Street Baptist Church toward downtown. But they didn't get very far. Bull Connor had them arrested almost immediately. King's decision to defy the court order drew sharp criticism from a group of local white ministers. The day after he was taken into custody, the ministers published a scathing rebuke of King's activism in the newspaper. Among other things, they called his use of direct action unwise and untimely. They said if change was going to come, it should come from the courts and not the streets. King was deeply disturbed by the minister's criticism. He believed that as fellow messengers of the gospel, they should understand the necessity and urgency of black protest more than anyone else in the white community, but they didn't. So just like the Apostle Paul, he wrote to these Christians from jail. 